to practice blues in all 12 keys? I used to ask that question a lot. And it's not something I think about anymore. I'm gonna tell you why in a moment, but I thought I would share a question um, from one of my online students, James, who recently posted this inside our forum. Is it worth practicing blues in all keys? Hi, Bob, I was wondering what your thoughts are about practicing blues in all keys. This is something that's been nagging me for a while. As someone who's primarily a tenor player, I only really feel comfortable playing blues in B flat or F. You sort of discussed this in your alto video about learning tunes on tenor and about how learning tunes on tenor and alto can be confusing. Do you feel the same way about the blues? I'm working on incorporating some of this into my practice. I've been taking the key center I've been focusing on. This week it's the key of B and trying to run through the changes of a blues after thinking it and saying it. I'm fine doing this at basic levels, roots going to seventh chords, but the moment I start trying to add language, my muscle memory kicks in and I find myself in the wrong key. I know that Bob Mincer is a strong advocate of playing the blues and rhythm changes in all keys. He certainly practices what he preaches. <laughs> Now, I recommend checking out that Mincer video, that clip. It's it's pretty cool. He's just sitting in a chair playing literally up a half step every chorus. The only reason that it's easier to play B flat and F blues is because that's what you do all the time. So your fingers have naturally you know, found places to go where your ear goes, yep, that's cool, that works. And, and so you go to those places more and more. What we have, what happens when we jump into the quote unquote harder keys is that we're not as familiar with them mechanically or sonically and so you can do this thing where you, you know a chord or you maybe know a couple of notes and then you land somewhere and you go geez i can't i don't know what's next and and the thing is that you're blocked it's like you might hit that one note but you can't really see the chord and scale stuff that's above that note or what's below it right what i want to point out in this video is an alternate strategy because a lot of guys tend to i used to do this put on like the blues and all keys abersol for instance and just do that, go through key by key. The problem with that kind of practicing, in my opinion, is it's shallow. It's very shallow practicing. Like you'll tend to play better in the keys that are already more familiar and you'll skate over the keys that are less familiar until the next you know, chorus comes around. So what I like to do instead is take one little nugget. Let's, let's just take a B flat blues, okay? And I'm gonna take one point in that blues and that's gonna be that my one significant thing that I'm gonna practice. So I might spend a half an hour just doing this and I'll put on the metronome. And my only goal here is to find one isolated place that I can work on. So I'm gonna work on the four chord, excuse me, the measure that leads to the four chord, the fourth measure of the blues, okay? What I wanna do is do like a tritone substitution in that fourth measure, because that's a, that's a cool spot. First, I'll mentally map that out. That's step one. I go, all right, the four chord is F7. So the two five in the measure that precedes that is G minor, C7, F. Okay, so the the tritone substitution for, for um, C7 is F sharp seven, right? So it's approaching it by half step. What's the two relative to that? Um, C sharp minor seven. Okay, so now I'll just outline the sound of that. <laughs> And that's all I'm gonna work on. So when I say mentally map it out, I mean like literally take the time to figure that out instead of just run up and down on your horn. Think, okay, so I'm gonna go F sharp seven, I'm gonna focus, but I'm, in this instance, I'm gonna focus actually on just playing the C sharp minor chord because, follow me for a second, if the chord is C seven and I play C sharp minor, which is C sharp, E natural, and G sharp, I get like the flat nine, I get the natural three, and I get the, uh, what do I get? The sh flat 13, I guess. Sharp five, flat 13, whatever. Get some colorful notes. I'm gonna just work on that part. I'm gonna make sure I know it up and down the horn, and then I'm gonna look for something I can play in that measure, and then I'm gonna just spend some time practicing like permutations of that. So I'll come up with a few different ways to articulate that sound, and I'll just keep working on that. So as I play through the blues, I'm really focusing on that part. That's where all my attention is. Okay, so I'll give you an example. Uh, I'm just looking for places to resolve. Now I'll do it in time. One, two, uh, uh.
I'm just gonna look for different ways that I can play that sound and resolve it into the four chord. And that's what I'm gonna focus on. Now, as I play through the blues, every time I come to that part, that's where my attention goes. So I'll give you an example. One, two, three. <laughs> Not really sweating this part. What's this got to do with playing in all 12 keys? All right, well, if I really get that solid in one key, right? And really when I, it's, this is all where the mental mapping part comes in. If I really understand what I'm doing. So now I can build this kind of this roadmap back to where that happens. So, all right, playing a C blues for me, concert B flat blues, but my C blues in the fourth measure, before we get go to the F7 chord, the four chord, I'm, I know that now I have this little thing worked out this sound, it's not even that it's a specific lick, but it's a sound, meaning the sound of C-sharp minor against that C7, okay? So C-sharp minor, F-sharp seven, but mostly that sound of C-sharp minor that I can work with that sound there. So now if I hop into a new key, let's just pick a new key. Now I'm in uh, uh, A, okay, uh, concert G, A for the tenor, right? Um, real quick, I, I go, what, well, one chord is A, four chord is D, Five chord is E7, everything's gonna be built off that. So I'm headed to D. All I need to know is that for me, for this particular little trick, A7, um, in the key of A, I'm gonna just go up a half step, right? So just to go back to our early example, C7, I went up to C sharp minor. So now I'm in A, I'm gonna go up to B flat minor. So now I can quickly map that out and go, okay, what's B flat minor? <laughs> And then I added something, didn't I? I added the second or the ninth to that. So I put that together. Now we're in the key of A. I know I've got the one, the four, and the five. And when I get to that part, I can just insert that lick. So I can just move on to different keys. This works because I spent a lot of time in one key making sense of a very small thing and working on that and building like a mental map and then doing some very permutate, very, doing some permutations of that one little thing that I worked out, work out a couple of things and, and that's it. And if you just spend time, if I just sit there and really work on that one thing in one key, you begin to own it. And when you begin to own it and it makes sense, then it's much easier to translate it or transpose it over to other keys. Whereas if I sat there um, and just tried to do that through all 12 keys, again, it goes back to what I'm saying before, it's kind of a shallow level approach. And what you end up doing is you, you default back to the easy key, keys and you don't really learn it in the quote unquote harder keys, or which, which really just means they're less familiar. So get familiar with that and work on that like one nugget, one little thing. It could be any anything you're working on. And then work on building a mental map in your mind to what that is. Make that thing make sense to you. Work out the theory in the simplest way for you, and then you can replicate it in other keys.